Welcome back to part 3, bicarb. First an explanation of where bicarb comes from. You might remember from part 1 how CO2 combined with water under the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. Well, the carbonic acid then disassociates into hydrogen ions and bicarb. The kidney is, does the job of maintaining a circulating level of bicarb that is 20 times what carbonic acid it saves. So that's the kidney's job. In fact, as the next slide shows, pH is calculated from the log of the bicarb level relative to the carbonic acid level. One thing you need to be aware of is that bicarb is not a measured parameter on blood gas machines. Blood ma gas machines measure oxygen, pH and carbon dioxide and solve for the bicarb. And I'll show you how it does that. It does that by rearranging this formula. Here's another way of rewriting that previous formula, by the way, known as the henderson hasselbalch equation, where carbon dioxide and pH, the ratio to each other, has to do with how the blood gas machine calculates the bicarb. And there's two ways to get a low bicarb. That is to have a low pH with a normal CO2, or if you have a low CO2 and a normal pH, the, the machine will calculate a low bicarb. To get a high bicarb, you only have to have a high CO2 with a normal pH, or a high pH with a normal CO2. In any of these ways, uh, you can get these derange derangements of bicarb beyond the 22 to 26 milli equivalent. Okay, what do clinical cases look like? Re realize that bicarb can go down very rapidly and will do so in cases of uh, lactic acidosis. Uh, you know how that happens when oxygen is not adequate to meet the demands of tissue. The tissue goes in anaerobic glycolysis and uh, lactic acid buildup. The bicarb then buffers that lactic acid and starts to drop. Uh, and this can happen in cases of low cardiac output or sepsis, cardiac arrest, bicarb can also don go down rapidly in diabetic ketoacidosis and it can go down in renal failure. What about those cases of elevated bicarb? Bicarb will go up to compensate for a chronically high PCO2. You have to realize this is a very slow process. It's a slow process of the body shedding hydrogen ions and retaining bicarb. And this can take a matter of uh, weeks in the case of a COPD patient who's chronically high, it probably happened over a matter of years. Uh, so the compensation for bicarb to compensate for CO2 is a relatively slow process. Uh, one rapid way to get too much bicarb is for the physician to give you too much. Notice I said physician-induced, not respiratory therapist-induced. And back to the last slide. Well, that's it for bicarb. Come back next time when we start talking about putting it all together and looking at the acid-base status as a balance between CO2 and bicarb. And we'll get into it a little deeper. See you next time.